Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I hope you're doing well. I hope coronavirus didn't get you, which I don't think it did. But I also hope that you are not being brainwashed by all this false information that we are receiving right now. We just heard in Colorado that our governor said a couple of days ago that it would be advisable for everybody to wear um, mouth uh, covers, masks, or whatever, something for your mouth to cover it up. So medical masks or, yeah, mouth covers. So that's what the newest thing that we heard. Well, this newest thing also was heard in Germany. So my sister's telling me in Ger from Germany that that's exactly what they also announced in Germany. That it is advisable for everybody to wear mouth cover. Well, guess what? You know what people do? Everybody is now thinking they need to wear mouth uh, protection or masks. Everybody. Already a couple of days later, half of the people that go to the store and including the the uh, employees are wearing masks or mouth covers medical masks okay this is how fast our government is working actually not our government but the world government so who in the world is behind this world uh, this this yeah who is behind this world organization called what is it called um, the, is it the national, the World Health, it's called the World Health Organization. Is the World Health Organization now behind telling all the countries and all the governors how to run this pandemic? And what is this World Health Organization? How much power do they have? Where do they get their power from? Now, in our country, the United States, CDC is the one that makes, is kind of the, the person or the, the agency in our country that actually is in charge of running this pandemic. Okay, CDC. It's not even the government. CDC is part of, supposedly part of the government. Okay, they are telling the government how to run this uh, pandemic. Okay. And I have talked about them before. Over the CDC again, behind CDC, is the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization tells every country, except, of course, China and Russia and the allies of Russia and China, what to do. Okay? That's how it goes. So now we can think about, hmm... Who is behind all this? They have been planning this for a long time. This um, health organization, World Health Organization, has been in existing for a long time, right? Now, this is their first time. Is it was it the first? Is it the first time that they're now getting into action and really um, organizing this pandemic? Hmm, I don't know. But these are things that we really should be thinking about. A couple of days ago, our governor told us that it would be recommended that we wear face masks. And my sister was telling me that a couple of days ago, Germany did the same thing. So these instructions come from an international organization because we're all doing the same. Now, worst part is about this whole thing is that they recommend. But the people are right now so fearful and hyped up that they do exactly what the government does. So today, half of the people in the stores wear masks, including the employees. Okay. My daughter works at Walmart. She told me yesterday she wore a mask because she didn't know if it was a recommendation or if it was something that we are supposed to be doing. 
okay? So do you kind of understand how this whole thing works? It is based on psychology. The government knows very well how to manipulate the masses and how they will actually abide by the rules without even applying any force. Yeah, no force whatsoever. All we need is shaming or somebody else putting another person down. That's all we have to do. We all have to just shame. And we got plenty of people out there that are buying into this scare technique or tactic of our government. That yes, this is the end of the world. There was this video um, not too long ago that actually made it even into German um, media. So public media, right? Public media. And that's a video that showed that in New York, it's almost like a war zone. They picked one uh, hospital in New York and said that people were sleeping or were laying on the floor because they didn't have enough beds. And they had um, trucks picking up dead bodies. That's how bad they said it was in New York in this hospital. And they can't find any spot to bury the dead. Well, another person picked up on that and said, oh, no, you know, she did the research and said, no, that's not true. That, that, that is not happening. Um, and I'm just looking it up right now if I find it because I know, oh, yeah, here it is. This is the lady. And you can look up this lady and actually uh, listen to the video. And I put it in the link on the bottom. Uh, a planet, no, a plane a plain truth for you. That's what the channel is called. A plain truth. That's one word. A, a plain truth dash four number four you. And I put it on the bottom. She says fake pandemic, fake death, fake doctors. All a simulation feed. Amazing Polly. That's the lady. I think that's the lady. Amazing Polly. Okay. And I think what I um, have here is not from Amazing Polly. Somebody actually did uh, put that on there. So, but I have watched Amazing Polly and she has very good research. She did excellent research on that video that went viral viral and everybody even in germany believed it and believed that it is horrible in new york i heard from the governor uh, i believe in uh, on friday that they are doing okay in new york they have enough respirator respirators um, that uh, they're not even used at this point the hospitals are not totally filled okay so what this video um, described was a fake, was fake news, period. Somebody said, well, is this a fake pandemic as well? And that's a good question. And we should ask that question. Is it really a fake pandemic? Is the whole thing fake? And I'm not saying the coronavirus does not exist. You know, I don't say that. That coronavirus does exist, that's for sure. But then again, I'm not so quite sure if the death that are called or are, are said to be caused by this coronavirus are actually caused by that coronavirus, or if they just, that coronavirus was just there when they tested that person that died, but that person really died of something else. We don't know that for sure. Just don't take everything that you hear for uh, the truth because it isn't. As we can see, this fake video 
was absolutely fake. And people in Germany even saw it and believed it. And of course, they don't know. They're not there. I am not in New York. I don't know. But this lady, Amazing Polly, she had things on her video where other people actually went to that um, that uh, hospital, see, saw the empty lines, which prior they had people lined up to go into that hospital, okay? So when they went after seeing the video, nobody was lined up, nobody. So it's kind of amazing. And I don't think we should listen to these informations and get into a panic. You see what's happening in your own um, community and you judge it by your own community. Okay, that's what you need to do. I'm not saying you should not be careful. I even think if you need to keep social distance, if you uh, have preconditions, stay at home. I saw an old lady yesterday. People, unbelievable. An old lady, she could hardly walk. She could hardly breathe. And she had an older man with a man with him that helped her come to Walmart yesterday. She had a hard time lining up in, in, you know, in this big thing that they lined up that you had to line up in because she probably wanted to come and sit on her little uh, driving little thing, right? Cart thing, driving cart. And she couldn't and she couldn't hardly walk. Now, I think that is irresponsible. That is very irresponsible. I don't know if these older people don't just don't know what's going on. It's very possible and that they don't know what's going on. And, and they just, all of a sudden, they come to, you know, Walmart and realize, oh, what's going on here? Um, but these people should be at home. And I'm not saying that this coronavirus, if it's a virus, like a flu virus, can kill older people. Or if they have a precondition that will finally give, you know, at the last as you say, nail to the coffin. Possible, not saying that. But all this you need to be careful because we are deceived. Very, 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 very deceived. And believe me, most people keep quiet and go along with this nonsense because they're hoping that it will be over pretty soon. That's the whole thing. They go along because they think after one month, two months, even three months, it has to be gone um, and things will go back to normal. No, people, things are not going back to normal. They will not. The next thing that will happen is, of course, the, uh, the meltdown of the economic system. That's going to be the, 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 the you know, the, the collapse of the econ economic system because our economy can't handle it. Regardless of what you think, the more money our government will pump out and they can't bail out our economy. But the more they bail this country out and prolong the inevitable, which is the collapse of our economy, the worse it's going to get. That means eventually it's going to get really bad. And the question is, why are they trying to prolong it? Why are they trying to prolong it? What do they know? What we don't know. What do they know that we don't know? And I have mentioned that before. How do you know these elite are keeping us locked down so they can prepare to go into their bunkers? You know Revelation 6. 12 through 16. You know what it says, right? It says that the elite knows the wrath of God is coming and they hide in the bunkers. Read it. I think it's mainly 15 and 16, uh, verse 15 and 16. They hide in the bunkers. They hide in the bunkers, people. So how do you know they're not doing that right now? While you were at home, locked up, they are nicely getting comfy in their 
bonkers. How do you know? Oh no, you don't know, do you? Okay, but we Christians are dumb. I am sorry, I have to say that word. But we, actually the Bible says, we uh, perish for lack of knowledge. That's what the Bible says. We perish for lack of knowledge. And I don't know where it is, I'm going to have to look it up for you. But you can put it in. My people lack for, actually I could put it in, couldn't I? My people perish for lack of knowledge. It comes up right here. Yep, there it is. Hosea 4, 6. My people, oh, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay, there you go. You got it. Why? Because we close our eyes. And we don't want to see what's really going on. We should know. We should know our Bible and know what the Bible says. And we don't. People ignore the fact that we are coming up to the wrath of God. They ignore that. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen. Oh no, we are going to go through tribulation first. Okay, through tribulation first. Oh no, 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 we don't even have to talk about it. The Antichrist has to come first. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, 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 and, and of course the falling away. Oh no, we have not fallen away yet. People, wake up. We have fallen away for 2,000 years. We had the Reformation. Before the Reformation, we fell away totally. Not I mean, very few people were left over who were true Christians. Then the Reformation started and the Reformers scrambled so hard to put things back in place and to go back to the truth, Bible truth, Bible truck doctrine, and what has happened for the past 500 years of, uh, after the Reformation. People are going right back to even throwing out a uh, 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 sound doctrine. The Antichrist has already infiltrated in their saying the Antichrist is not here. It is unbelievable. The Antichrist has already infiltrated again in the Protestant churches and have ruined false, I mean, a sound doctrine. They went in and didn't even allow it. This Antichrist spirit or the Antichrist, okay? Even that person that people call Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, who has been around since the founding of the Catholic Church. That's the Antichrist. Okay, that is the law, man of lawlessness has been around for a long time. And he has been controlling the situation. He has, uh, I mean, for 1,500 years or 1,200 years, he killed all the saints. All the saints. And then finally Luther came and some of the other reformers. And for 500 years we had reformation. And it was again just totally stopped from, from continuing. And this false end times doctrine entered the seminaries. Entered or got into the heads of our pastors for the past 500 years. And we are now... Ended, we now end up in a confusion and a deception about what great tribulation is. Paul talks about great tribulation all the time. The saints go through great tribulation. And by the end of the great tribulation, look at Matthew 29. By the end of the great tribulation... Jesus is returning and the wrath of God starts. Okay? That is very, very easy to see. You look at Matthew 24, 29. You look at Luke at 21, 24, Mark 13, 24. And you will see that that is when the wrath of God starts. You can also look what I just said, Revelation 6, 12. 
okay, and continuing. That's when the wrath of God starts. At the end of tribulation. At the end of great tribulation for the saints. There is no need to argue. And you don't need to follow the Antichrist spirit. Because dispensationalism, where this stuff is coming from about this uh, uh, false great tribulation, and it is false. They used the name great tribulation and filled it with false uh, definition. False definition. Look up the word great tribulation or tribulation and you will see it is persecution and hardship for saints. When the rapture happens, people, there's no more hardship for the saints. It's gone. Great tribulation is gone. That's why Matthew, Luke, and um, uh, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, and John in Revelation 6 tells you when the sun goes dark and the moon loses its shine, great tribulation has come to an end. Now, how do I know it from John? Because John tells us in Revelation 6, 12 through 16, that the wrath of God is coming. And in chapter 7, you see the saints, the multitude in heaven. You see the multitude in heaven, people. They're not on earth anymore. They have been raptured. Okay, look it up. And then in, in chapter 8, the wrath of God is coming. Yes, I know. Revelation is not chronological. But the seven seals are chronological. The seven trumpets are chronological. And the seven bowls are chronological. And the letters. Okay? They're all one I mean, they're all separate visions, and but they're within that vision, they're chronological. Okay? It's not like the seventh seal, uh, um, some of the seals are in the beginning and some of the end. No, they are mentioned chronologically all in one uh, um, package or one vision. The same with the seven trumpets. They're all mentioned chronological one after another. Okay? So, Understand it that way. So when John is talking about the seals, one happens after another, and it is chrono they are chronologically described. Now, in uh, the, the when after the sixth seal, what he does, he doesn't go directly to the seventh because he has to say something prior because he says before the seventh uh, seal starts, things have um, two things have to happen. The people are going to be that are going through the, the wrath of God will have to be sealed. 144,000, which is only symbolic people. Okay? They're sealed. And, and the saints are being taken out before the wrath starts. Okay? So make no mistake. People are still confused. They are not reading their Bible. So now there's people that don't only misunderstand that the rapture happens after the Great Tribulation, but there's people that are absolutely confused that the rapture does not happen after the wrath of God. There's actually people that take Matthew 24, and I'm going to go there, Matthew 24, and say the rapture happens at the end of the wrath of God. Because what they're saying is that in verse 30, the rapture happens. People, we're just seeing the wrath of God in verse 29. Why do we know it's the wrath of God? Because of Revelation 6 that I just mentioned, 12 through 16. We also know it from Joel 2. If you also read Joel 2, you can also see that this phrase, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Now, right now I have the NIV and I can go down, 
by the NIV and go to, what is it? Actually, it's something different that they're mentioning here, but it's in Joel as well. And I'm going to have to check in again. B. Isaiah 13, 10 and Isaiah 34, 4. Those are both that talk about, also talk about that event. The sun going dark. That is a phrase that even Jesus used from the Old Testament, from the prophets, to show that the day of the Lord is coming. And he used it here for the second coming of Jesus because they said, when will Jesus return? Okay, so Jesus said, my return overlaps with what the prophets called the day of the Lord. Okay, so when the day of the Lord starts, and make no mistake, the day of the Lord is a thousand years. It's not one day. How do I know? Second Peter. Look in Second Peter. I don't have it in my head. It could be Second Peter 2 or Second Peter 5 or even Second Peter 1. I don't know. Peter is Second Peter is very short. So look it up. It tells you one day with God is like a thousand years. And so the day of the Lord is a thousand years. That's the millennium. Okay, it's the millennium. So it's not one day. So when Jesus returns, that is the day that day of the Lord starts. Now, he is not seen by everybody until the end of the wrath of God. By the end of the wrath of God, then will appear, and that is in verse 30. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the people of the earth will mourn. All the people of the earth. Now, if it says all, does that mean all? Yes. That means the saints are not left over right there. They are already in heaven. Why? Because the rapture happened before the wrath of God. Okay? Before the wrath of God. And Jesus did not mention that. Not, neither did John mention it. But John at least said, before the wrath of God starts, the saints are in heaven. Okay? So did Isaiah 26, 19 through 21. He said the same thing. That uh, the death will rise, the resurrection, and then they are supposed to hide in the rooms that Jesus prepared for them. Then the wrath will pass. Okay? You know what? You have to put these verses together. So, again, look at this. Then will appear the Son of the Man, and then all people of this earth will mourn. The leftover people. Why are they mourning? Because they missed Messiah. They missed the rapture, and they're pretty sad. Then, they, he said, they will see the Son of, the, of Man, Jesus, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That is after the wrath of God. That is after Armageddon. That is after all the seven bowls and after the seven trumpets. That is not before. That's at the end. Okay? Then it says, He will send, He, Jesus, will send His angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather His elect from the four winds. The angels are gathering the elect. The elect are not the saints. Why are they not the saints? I will tell you in a bit. You can see that in Zechariah 14. Why? Because when Jesus comes back on the clouds, the elect are coming with him. The elect are coming. I mean, not the elect. Sorry. The holy ones will come with him. The saints will come with him. And when he comes back and the holy ones come with him, that's when the angels go out and collect the 144,000 that were sealed. Okay? Those are the elect. Those are the 144,000 that were sealed are the elect that um, Matthew here mentioned. Why? Because Jesus is not collecting them. The angels are collecting them. Who 
is coming to pick up the bride. Jesus is. He is coming. He blows the trumpet and he will snatch out every believer that is left, uh, uh, left over. He will snatch out every believer. Do you know that, and you see that in Revelation, um, the fifth seal, the soldier already in heaven under the altar. So all they're already up there. All they need to get is a new body. Okay. They all need to get a new body and they will get their new body. And then they're not a souls anymore. Then they will stand before the altar. And we who are left behind, I mean, behind, I mean, still alive, our body will be changed in a twinkling of an eye and we will be up there in heaven. Our body will be changed in a twinkling of an eye and we'll be up in heaven with the rest and I mean of the, uh, of the saints. That's what happens. And, but that happens immediately after the distress of those days and before the sun goes dark. Okay, before the wrath of God starts. Now, this again, like I said, the sun will be darkened and the moon will get uh, give, give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That is in a short form, uh, symbolic for the wrath of God, which John explained in the uh, seven bowls and the seven trumpets in more detail. Okay, make no mistake. But the saints will be gone. And when Jesus returns on the clouds at the end, the saints will come with him. They will come with him. Okay? So you can see how confused people are. They are confused. They are both confused about the, I mean, by the Antichrist spirit. And how many people still think that this Antichrist is this one man ruler at the end? How many people still think that? How many people have not read first and second John and get the definition what Antichrist spirit is? Antichrist is everybody who believes that Jesus did not come in the flesh or in other words that Jesus is God in the flesh now John stressed that not only in his gospel but in his two letters he stressed that very strongly that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh and if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh you have the Antichrist spirit and he said many antichrists will come. Many. Not just one. Many. And there's not just, oh, the antichrist. No. There's many antichrists. What you guys are talking about, if you think the antichrist is a one-man person at the end, no. That is what Paul referred to as the man of lawlessness who needs to come before the rapture, which has already come 300 and some, I mean, uh, 326 when the Roman Catholic Church was founded and the, the, the emperor put himself uh, as the head of the church. That's when that happened. And every uh, pope following that, every head of the church following that, which is called the pope, is sitting in the place of the Holy Spirit and in the place of Jesus and in the place of God. Okay? That's what's happening. And you need to understand that. And all this confusion that is going on today with this coronavirus is just one step further for Jesus' return. It's just one step further. And if you do not wake up and battle and, uh, and if you are confused about these end times prophecies, then you will miss Jesus. You will miss the bridegroom returning because you will not be ready. In my channel, I have showed you over and over again in my videos that you need to be ready. I have many people, when I share this video on Facebook, I have many people that are laughing about what I'm teaching and they're saying, I'm not teaching the truth. No, no, uh-uh. You think you, if you think I am not teaching the truth, well, you show me clearly, okay? 
you show me clearly where I am wrong. No, this is not wrong. Compare these things. If you think that, um, that Jesus is picking up his bride after the wrath of God, well, show me where it says that. I see clearly here in Matthew that he's picking it up. He's picking or he's picking up his elect after the wrath of God. But those are not the saints. Oh, again, go to Zechariah. I forgot. And this is what I'm going to finish up with. Okay, Zechariah 14, and I think it's Zechariah 14, let's see, Zechariah 14, I think it's an 8, where, um, and I, I know last time I had a hard time finding it, but I think I remember it now. Nope, it's not. It's in 5, 14, Zechariah 14, 5, and I'm going to finish up with that. You will flee, uh, I don't need to do that. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And this is it. Then the Lord, my God, will come and owe all the holy ones with him. This is at the end of the wrath of God, and it's at the end of of Armageddon. Armageddon is the end of the wrath of God. Okay? And at the end of the wrath of God, it says, then the Lord my God will come. Okay? In the clouds. That's exactly what Jesus told them. Exactly. After the, tri not the tri after the, the wrath of God, the sun going dark, Jesus will come in the clouds, in the clouds. What does it say? And the Lord, my God, will come and all the holy ones with him. Okay? With that, I'm coming to an end. I hope you will be with Jesus when he returns in the clouds. I hope you will be one of his the members of the bride. Okay? I hope you're not going to be left over when the wrath of God starts, which will happen very, very soon. And people say, well, what's very, very soon? Well, look at what's happening today. Our government has total control over us. They are hiding things. They're lying to us. They are already preparing a third world war. Okay? Look at what's, what's happening. They are right now blaming China for what they supposedly started <laughs> when all along they started it, okay? Look at all the stuff that's going on. We are in an oil war with Russia. Look what's ha happening. They're pressuring China and Russia constantly. Constantly, they're pressuring China and Russia. Do you think someday they're going to have enough and they will go against us? I think so very much. Eventually, they're going to have enough of America pressuring them and the rest of the world pressuring them. And that's when the end happens. Matter of fact, you know what? The wrath of God will start sooner. Okay? You know how much sooner? I don't know for sure. Could be three and a half years sooner. Then the wrath of God will start. And it will start, I believe, with the United States. I believe the United States will be hit with hail and fire mixed, uh, you know, like blood. Okay, that's where it starts. Well, where can we find that? I think we can find that in Revelation. Read Revelation 8. Revelation 8. That's where the first trumpet hits. And what is the first thing? A third of this world is going to be burned. You know what one third the world is? That's the United States. That is America. America is the continent that is one third of the world. Okay? Hmm. Could that be uh, um, something? Why one third is burned? Because it is our continent that maybe is exposed to the sun or something that is coming. From that side, I don't know, but you know what? America will be hit just as hard as the rest of the, the world. Don't make any mistakes. But I'm coming to the end because this is already way too long. 
I know people don't want people to just ramble on and they say, oh, that's why I'm not listening to your videos because they're too long. Okay, anyways, let the Holy Spirit guide you always and be ready.